There's one thing about Zakir Naik that makes people really think that he knows what he's talking about, and that's when he's able to, to share facts randomly and very quickly from the top of his head in such a manner that makes you think, wow, he is a really intelligent man. But a friend of mine sat down and went through a five minute talk of his once, and in that five minutes, he was able to make over 25 mistakes. Charles Darwin went on an island by the name of Calatropis. There is no such island as the Calatropist Islands anywhere. It was actually the Galapagos Islands that Darwin visited where he found finches. And there he found birds pecking at niches. These finches do not peck at niches, as Nike says. They lived in separate ecological niches. Depending upon the ecological niches they peck, the beak kept on becoming long and short. The differences Darwin observed between these finches were far more than simply beak length. They included differences in color, size, mating behavior, songs, and preferred food. This observation was made in the same species, not in different species. Darwin's observations of varying beaks were made on 14 different species of finches, not just one, as Dr. Knight claims. The beak length actually did not vary within the species. Charles Darwin wrote a letter to his friend Thomas Thompson. All of Darwin's published correspondence is printed and even available electronically online, and it contains no record of anyone named Thomas Thrompton. Charles Darwin himself said that there were missing links. He didn't agree with it. Darwin admitted that there were missing links, but that does not mean he disagreed with his own theory. He simply predicted where the missing links would be found. The reason is because that if you analyze the church, the church was against science previously. The church was never against science. Almost all the great European scientists of Galileo's time, including Galileo, were devout Christians. People like Newton, Copernicus, Kepler, Boyle, Linnaeus, Pascal were all committed believers in the Bible. And you know the incidents that they sentenced Galileo to death. They sentenced Galileo to death. Galileo, a devout Catholic, was never sentenced to death. He was sentenced to life imprisonment on June 22, 1633, and then that sentence was commuted to house arrest. He died more than eight years later on the evening of January 8, 1642, of old age. Galileo believed that his theories fit with the Bible, and he wrote a book arguing this based on inter early interpretations of Christians like Augustine. Knight goes on to make the same false statement two more times, but let's only count it as one factual error. So all the scientists, most of them, they support the theory because it went against the Bible, not because it was true. Actually, most scientists did not support Darwin's theory for many years, and most of these same scientists revered the Bible. Basically, this account by Dr. Nike is a total fabrication. All the sages, you see, there were four hominides. Everything Dr. Nike says here is wrong. There is no such word as hominites. He must mean hominids. Science tells us that there are four hominids. There are not a mere four hominids. There are at least 14. First is Lucy, along with its guide, Dastrolopithecus. There is no such hominid as Dastrolopithecus. Lucy was an Australopithecus afarensis, which died about three and a half million years, Ice Age. The Ice Age was not three and a third million years ago. It was between 1.6 million years and 10,000 years ago. Then next came the Homo sapiens, who died about 500,000 years ago. Homo sapiens did not die out 500,000 years ago. You and I, and even Zakir Naik, are Homo sapiens. Then came the Neanderthal man. According to evolutionary theory, Neanderthal man was not on the direct line to modern man, but an Ice Age offshoot. The Neanderthal man, we died 140,000 years ago. Neanderthal man went extinct 30,000 years ago, not 100 to 40,000 years ago. Then came the fourth stage, the Cro-Magnon. Cro-Magnon man is the same thing as Homo sapiens, which Nike had mentioned as a different earlier species. There is no link at all between these stages. Actually, evolutionary biologists have found many examples of what they claim to be links between these stages. For example, Homo habilis, Homo ergaster, and Homo heidelbergensis. If you know of Sir Albert Georgi, who got the Nobel Prize for inventing, for inventing the vitamin C. Georgi didn't invent vitamin C, he discovered it. Vitamin C is a naturally occurring substance that doesn't need to be invented. He wrote a book. The Crazy Ape and Man, against Darwin's theory. Albert said Gergi's book was not called The Crazy Ape and Man, but simply The Crazy Ape. 
and it was not a refutation of evolution, but a sociological commentary. If you know about Rupert Talbot, this person wrote a new theory of evolution against Darwin's theory. Who is Rupert Talbot? I can find no trace of anybody with that name. From the apes. If you know of Sir Frank Salisbury, you are the biologist. Nike quotes one unknown person after another. Who is Sir Frank Salisbury? Again, vigorous searching can find no trace of anybody with that name. But to give Nike the benefit of the doubt, this will not be counted as a factual error. If you know about white meat, Sir White Meat. White Meat? Who is Sir White Meat? For the fourth time, no trace can be found of anybody with this name. At lower level, an amoeba, at lower species level, amoeba can change to paramecia. There is no such thing as paramecia. Perhaps he means paramecium. But the evolutionary change of an amoeba to a paramecium is far more dramatic biologically than the relatively small biological difference between apes and humans. According to Hansis Craig, who is authority in this field, he said it is unimaginable. There is no such person as Hensess Crake. Knight probably means Francis Crick, the co-discoverer of DNA. Francis Crick believes fully in evolution. <laughs>